Hey, how y'all doing? Welcome to the very first podcast of In Zone. I'll be your host, T Gay. All right, let's get this going now. Uh, sorry about that intro music, but uh, you know, with copyright stuff and everything that's going on nowadays, there's only so much that you can uh, put out there in music, and uh, they'll rip you to your YouTube site down. So I have to get some uh, non generic or copyrighted music to open the show. That was about the best I could come up with. Uh, maybe throughout the year, I'll be working on other things and uh, see if I can get some better music than that, but uh, it's not a bad start. So uh, anyway, this is the first episode of uh, In The Zone. I hope you like the name. I can't, I can't really remember why I, why I named it In The Zone. I, I, for the life of me, I, uh, there was a catch of some sort and I, I can't remember exactly what it was. And I thought, you know, that's really good. I like the way that works. Uh, oh, I know what it was. Yeah, it was uh, in the zone. And since we're in the league, the control zone, right? Makes sense. So, yeah, so I'm kind of in the zone. So that's what we're going to do. So here I am getting in the zone. And I'm ready to put out our first episode. What our first episode is going to be today is about... Let's see, we are going to do some power polls for the language division today. Yep, that's what I'm doing. I'm evaluating the teams prior to the draft to see where I think that the teams sit right now going into the draft, where I see them ending up in the uh, rest of the year. Now, who knows, once the draft is over, my whole opinions on everything may change, but uh, you can get a pretty good eyesight on to what's going on. So. Who do we have in spot number eight? Well, as you can see, our team number eight I have for the Langway Division is going to be the Macaulay Mustangs this year, from what I see. It looks like Keith is in a rebuilding stage right now. Uh, doesn't have a whole lot of signed players. Uh, the ones that he does have signed are, are not too bad, but he only has six forwards and two defense signed right now. And the forwards, uh, probably a little below average of what you want to have as a starting grid to go with. However, the two defensemen that he has uh, are both solid. Uh, Thomas Shabbat, who Shabbat, well, who knows? That guy could break out at any time. It wouldn't surprise me if he put up a 75-point season some year. Uh, I think he's that good. And uh, Neil Pionk? for the Jets is uh, looking like he, he turned out to be a good deal for the Jets when they got Pionk. The problem with Keith's team right now is if you take a look at these eight players who were signed, you can see Pionk was a uh, leading scorer out of all of them. And uh, you don't want to have your defenseman uh, as your leading scorer unless his name's Bobby Orr. And, and uh, Neil Pionk sounds nothing like Bobby Orr. So, uh, Key's got to amend that, but that's a good start to a strong defense. Still has lots of prospects on the go here, as you can see. So we've got eight prospects down in the pool. There's some uh, some good possibilities there. It looks like he could sign Miko Heskinen if he wanted to and uh, add him to his defense core. And that'd be three out of six that he would have, and all three would be very solid. Or who knows, he may want to sit on Heskinen for a while, but uh, who knows, maybe we'll offer him a big contract. Give him the big five years right now. And uh, then you got three solid defensemen to work around. Uh, the one glaring, glaring bad spot for the Mustangs is, is goaltending. Uh, they only have one goaltender, and that's Miko Koskinen, who's, uh, yeah, I, I don't know about this guy. And uh, let's see, he has him for another two years. So, uh, mind you, he's just rebuilding right now. So, Maybe you keep Koskin around, but Keith definitely needs to pick up some uh, definitely needs to pick up some goaltenders and some more defense and some more forwards, and that's probably why I've got him listed down at eight. However, on the positives, Mustangs do have the second overall pick this year, so that'll help out big time. Uh, Mustangs have three picks in the first eighteen, 
that's solid. So there's three solid players going on to the roster right there. And six picks in the first three rounds. So there's some hopeful there to get another chunk of the core going this year for Keith and see what else he can do. But as of right now, their standing is eighth. Now, who do we got coming up in seventh? Here's the team I got making a big fall, the Vancouver Island Chiefs. I got them dropping all the way down to the seventh place in the Langway division from what I see that they've got on the team this year. Uh, the Chiefs went from a top four team uh, in the money last year, getting the split big cash and got some money the year before that. But it looks like the Chiefs have run their gambit a little bit and they got some work to do. So the Chiefs, uh, they do have eight signed forwards, though, and they have Connor McDavid on it. And even with Connor McDavid, it's almost a little bit below average for, for eight forwards. But you take a look at Eric Stahl and you take a look at uh, Malkin. I mean, those guys there, good seasons last year, but Malkin's 34 and, and Stahl's 36. Will they be able to do it again this year? Will they be able to stay healthy? Uh, that's it, It's an old lineup. However, you've got Nico Hishire. Uh, Still hoping for more out of him. He was a uh, first overall pick. So you, you like to think that maybe he's got more to offer and uh, he's still young and it's very possible, but uh, yeah. So still four forwards uh, needed to sign and the four defensemen that, that the Chiefs have are, well, I'd have to put this core probably a little below average. Uh, so. There's some work to be done on defense. The four defense that are signed are not, are not that good. And uh, yeah, so a little bit of work is going to be needed to be done on defense. Another weakness for the Chiefs has got them down in 7-2 is lack of prospects. Del Cole, I don't know if he's going to be... Nobody really knows what's going to happen with this guy. He's either going to be a late bloomer or he's never going to get more than 20 points a year. Uh, Drake Batherson... Yeah, he's still young, so you never know what he's got. Another weakness for the Vancouver Island Chiefs this year is, and not not the player himself, but the goaltending, Corey Crawford. I mean, he is getting older, and he's going to the New Jersey Devils. Uh, I don't know if you've seen the division realignments for the possibility for the new season coming in the NHL, but in my opinion, the division that the Devils are going into, I believe is probably the hardest division of the four divisions out there. And I see New Jersey in eighth place. So I see Corey Crawford probably getting lit up a lot this year. And that's all the Chiefs got for goaltending. So that's not great. Uh, what else? Oh, the strengths. They do have a strength, though, in the draft. In the up-and-coming draft, they do have two first-round draft picks. They have two second-round draft picks. Uh, however, seven only seven picks in the entire eight rounds. So other than, you know, getting two firsts and two seconds, uh, which is great, seven out of eight rounds is not that great, especially with the team that's this week and these filled with rosters. So... That's going to be hard for JP to work out of, but it's a bit of a rebuild year, I would think, for the uh, for the Chiefs. Who knows? Maybe McDavid will uh, hit the trade bait board this year. Maybe uh, JP is going to want to get some first round picks, or maybe he still believes that he can be better this year. But the way I see it, TK sees it. Chiefs, you're going to seventh. <laughs> Sorry, bud. All right, and as you can see, I've got the Martians in sixth place. It's a step up for the Martians who were rebuilding last year. They were the uh, had the worst record in the league last year and were rebuilding and got themselves some draft picks. And they're, the way I see it, they're moving their way up a little bit. I got them slotted for uh, for a sixth spot in the division. So uh, you got to you take a look. Would they, they hardly have any forwards. That's the problem. They only have five forwards. Uh, at the current moment and uh, so Mercer's got some drafting to do and the forwards that they do have uh, are not that great Nylander being the best I guess with the 59 points but uh, yeah I need to definitely solidify a few more forwards and uh, defense uh, even though uh, got a full complement of defense and technically don't even have to draft any defense this year 
not the most solid D line around. Uh, it's looking a little weak in that department, and that looks like it could use a little bit of help as well. Going into the prospects, the prospects are also uh, coming down a bit. They're down to five prospects. Not any, I wouldn't say any studs out there in the prospect department. Maybe uh, Zadina. Zadina still has a shot to uh, maybe make it big. He possibly could. So still five prospects to work with. That's good. Uh, but the definite uh, strong point for the Martians is their goaltending. No doubt about it. And that's what gets them up into sixth place. Having uh, Jordan Biddington and Jacob Markstrom manning the net, they're going to look pretty good. However, one thing you got to worry about is, was Jordan Biddington a flash in the pan? I mean, he took a big step backwards last year. He started out great in his second season, and then he just woof, went down the toilet real quick and didn't have very good playoffs either. But if Jordan pops back to being the kind of goaltender he was uh, when Bennington won the Sound Cup with Blues, Bennington and Markstrom together is an awesome goaltending tandem, and that's why I've got the Martians up to six. All right, as you can see, I've got the Collwood Rangers in fifth spot for the, for the language division. And uh, right now, they currently have seven forwards signed, and it looks like they've got a pretty good forward crew there, especially once you bring in uh, Thomas and Tachuk, which uh, I'm sure Dean will be signing both those prospects this year. That gives a good, strong seven uh, offensive core in the forward department because you've got Miko Rad Ratnan and, of course, Vladi uh, Tarasenko back from injury this year. Greenway, good player. Vucinavich, another good one. Uh, yeah, so they're looking good in that department. A uh, little, little thin in the defense, but uh, the two D-men that the Rangers do have, McAvoy and Provorov, are, are more than solid defense. And so if Dink can do a little bit of adding to that defensive core of the same kind of caliber D-men, he'll be looking good in that department as well. And also in the prospect department for the uh, Rangers, they've uh, still got six six prospects out there to go if they sign uh, Thomas and, and Chichit. Uh, probably one stud that could be in there is Vitaly Kratz, Kratzov. So uh, he could be he could be a big stud coming into the Rangers a little bit later on, but I don't see Keith signing him this year. Or Kratz, sorry, <laughs> Dean signing him this year. Sorry, you know. <laughs> uh, the Rangers, solid in goal. Uh, I do believe they could have the best goaltender in the NHL. Vasilevsky very well may be the best goaltender in the NHL. Uh, and Ranta, I mean, the guy plays amazing for Arizona. I guess the only scare about Ranta right now would be the fact that he's a little bit injury prone. And even Vasilevsky can be injury prone. But as of right now, Colwood Rangers goaltending looks solid. And for those reasons, that's why I've got them in fifth place this year. All right, so you can see in fourth place, I've got my fellow commish, Living Skies capital owner, Al Gull's team finishing in fourth place this year. Al's got a nice assortment of uh, forwards going on here. Uh, he's signed up to nine forwards already. And this, I would say probably an above average crew. You got guys like Nicholas Backstrom on the team, Marcia So, Nelson, Oshi, Roslevic, Taves, Wheeler. Those guys can put up the points, and uh, most of those guys are above average. So not they're not superstars, but a lot of good points coming in there. Good, well-rounded, uh, rounded core going up there, and and it'll probably soon be ten because I was going to have to sign Sorelli this year. So there's another uh, nice young hockey player coming up for. Uh, for the Capitals and the, they already got 10 sign guys even going into the draft. So that's a great place to be. And uh, the defensive core is looking really solid for the Capitals as well. Uh, we've got Hannafin, Nurse, Drew, and Wierenski. Those guys are uh, all solid D-men. And TJ Brody, what will Brody do with uh, Morgan Riley in Toronto this year? So that's five really good defensemen there. So if you're looking at a strength for the Capitals this year, going into the draft, you only have to draft two forwards and one defenseman, technically, and, of course, any more spares that they want, but uh, that's a good, solid place to be. 
One of the weaknesses, though, uh, is the draft itself. Unfortunately, the Capitals' first pick was not till 39th overall pick, and that kind of hurts when you're trying to fill those last few spots. However, even at 39th, you can get somebody pretty good. The only unfortunate thing is uh, his next pick after that is, I believe, 81st. So that's not good. Uh, he needs some players to fill that out, but. Overall, the whole roster is solid and definitely should be a playoff team. Should have no problem adding to that list and making it a playoff contender this year. Could be, even be higher than fourth place. We'll see uh, how things shake out after the draft. Uh, also, still has a uh, big complement of prospects uh, down, uh, down in the minors. Uh, if you wanted to, I guess you could sign Sandine and that would give him six defenseman or may want to sit him on the bench another year and uh, let him get a little stronger and bigger for the NHL. But uh, when you look at uh, a solid for the team, uh, you got to look no further than Al's goaltending, Brayton Holby and, and Carey Price, two older guys, but uh, solid older guys. And they both have excellent term with four-year contracts. Uh, Braden Holtby, for me, is a bit of a question mark. Uh, going to the Canucks, we don't know what he's going to We've never seen him play with anybody but the Capitals. And I do think in the last couple of years, I've seen a decline in Holtby. So it'll be interesting. Maybe uh, he'll get revitalized being in Vancouver and feel like he's got something to prove. Either way, even if he has a bad season, the Capitals have got great goaltending with Holtby and Price. And that's why I've got Al, my bud, you're in fourth place. Going to the playoffs. Going to the show. Going to the dance. All right. As you can see, I've also got the Port Elgin Maple Leafs in a playoff spot. I've got them uh, third in the Langley division this year. They are looking very solid. Very solid. Got a fantastic forward crew. It's got uh, nine forwards signed. Nine solid forwards to be signed. And uh, uh, I believe that's right. One, two, three, four, five, six, uh, nine. No, so he's got seven forwards uh, and five defense. And all are solid on both. You've got uh, Aho, you've got Castle, Kopitar, McKinnon, Nick Schmaltz, uh, Zabanajad had a fantastic season last year. There's a lot of points there. And the defense is looking just as strong as maybe one of the best defense in the entire uh, NCZ. Uh, if it's not one of the best defense, it's, it's definitely in the top three or four for sure. Uh, got Adam Fox that you can sign and Kale McCarr. Those two guys have fantastic seasons and they're only going to get better. And uh, the real wild card for these guys, you know, they have Seth Jones and Brady Shea as well, but the real wild, wild card for uh, the Leafs is the, Gus, the ghost, Shane Gossespierre, CEO. Uh, if he can bounce back, boy, that would be huge for the Leafs, and they would have a super strong defense. They've got a super strong uh, offensive core, but they need to do a little bit of drafting. One of the weak spots they might have is now they're down to only about uh, two prospects, and who knows if uh, the Leafs want to sign Victor Olsen then they're down to a one prospect, but then they don't have to sign four forwards. Uh, they're looking uh, extremely solid in goal. Uh, you got Gorgiev and uh, Barlamov, the New York connection. One's a Ranger, one's an Islander. Uh, I see Barlamov probably maybe getting a little more than half the games this year, unless Sorokin goes on a tear and, and, and steals it away from them. But, I, I see Barry Trotz as the kind of guy who rewards a person for what he did, and Barlamov had a great playoffs last year. So I see him with a little more than half of the games this year. And Georgiev, well, I maybe in the 30 range for the Rangers. I see uh, Chester can probably take him about 50 of them. And uh, Merz Lakins. Well, there's another solid goaltender for this franchise. So the, uh, the Leafs are looking uh, very solid. As a matter of fact, uh, they could even be higher than third place this year in the division. I had a, it was a hard time with the uh, top four placing them where they go. But for right now, I see the Leafs in third spot, and that's a playoff spot, and that gives you a chance of the cup.
All right, so you can see that I've got in second place here. I've got moves like Jagger falling into the second spot in the Langway division. Uh, I originally, when I was just surfing through and looking at the teams at first glance, I had uh, MLJ. I had them number one in the league and possibly uh, a cup champion this year going in. And that's not to say that that still couldn't happen, but uh, as I started analyzing and I compared the two teams, uh, especially for first and second, uh, as great as the players that Nick has, has gotten together here, the other team is probably just a little more well-rounded and Nick's got some things he needs to take care of here first and may not have the tools to do it because of a possible bad draft, but we'll see. Uh, but as for his forwards, uh, wow. Uh, moves like Jagger, they they got nine signed forwards, and it is a very solid core. You got Besser, you got Crosby, Hurdle, Keller, Kucherov, Kuznetsov, Pasnak, Point, Drocek. Wow, that's a lot of points. That's a lot of points going up there. That is a solid forward group. So with already having nine signed, Nick only has to sign three more forwards. So that's looking real good. Then you take a look at his defense and you go, whoa, Ek whoa uh, Ekholm, Carlson, Klingberg, and Krug. Whoa, that's totally solid as well. So now you're going, wow, he only needs two defensemen as well. So he only needs three forwards, two defensemen. So, wow, yeah, and everybody else is solid. So he, how can he not be in, in, in first place in, in the division? Well, then you start to go down, you kind of take a look at the uh, – Oh, and I forgot to, I forgot to add, we got Quinn Hughes. He's going to obviously sign Quinn Hughes. So you've got Eklund, Carlson, Klingberg, Krug, and Hughes for your defense. That's some serious points going up there. So if he signs Hughes, he's looking at having to draft one defenseman, three forwards. But then you take a look at the goaltending and you see only one goaltender there and it's Jonathan Quick. And if there was ever a guy who's falling off a cliff right now, it's definitely Jonathan Quick. And uh, see, Nick still has him signed for three years here. Obviously, he's going to have to keep Quick, but he's going to have to add some goaltenders to this team to make it, uh, you know, to take a run at the Cups. The only way it's going to happen. So, with Hughes signing up into the defense core, that's going to leave the prospects really low. And the goaltending really needs a lot of work. And, and here's where the problem comes in. Uh, the Moose Lake Yager have a really bad, bad draft. Their first pick is 47th overall. And they only have seven picks in eight rounds. Yeah, and that's going to be hard to fill those spots, especially spots such as as goaltending. The only thing I can think of right now is um, he has so many, so many tools to work with. There are so many different players and pawns. He could make a trade and get his goaltending that way. If he does that, like I said, it could be a different team. Don't forget, these rankings are before the draft, so I'm just taking a guess at what I'm thinking is going to happen. Obviously, things are going to happen, and I could change my mind. So anyway, Nick, looks like a fantastic team. Could definitely be a cup winner. I'm not going to say it won't be, but uh, I've only got you for second place, but this team could easily prove me wrong. All right, so uh, you can see I've got winning the uh, Langway division. It would be back-to-back uh, -back championships for uh, RK if uh, Bring Up Suds can win this division again because they won last year. And uh, at first, I didn't really think that uh, the Bruins would have enough to overtake uh, MLJ. But once I took a look at the Bruins roster, there's not a whole lot to do here. I mean, it's a pretty solid roster. Uh, currently, the Bruins have 11 forwards signed. So, and the way I see it, that core of forwards is is above average. I mean, you look at the players, you got Atkinson, Bertuzzi, uh, Pierre-Luc Dubois, uh, Dvorak, even got Drew, uh, and he's going to sign Brendan Lemieux, who's a prospect, but man, that guy, 111 penalty minutes last year. Uh, uh, Panarin, wow, how can you go wrong after that season he had last year? Uh, Raquel, Mark Shifley, guy, penalty minutes and points. You got Tom Wilson, you got uh, penalty minutes, Jaden Swartz. Uh, almost every single guy on this uh, lineup 
is, is tough with the exception of maybe Raquel and uh, Dvorak and Atkinson. Uh, of those three guys, everybody else is up around the 40, 50 minute range, if not uh, like Brendan Lemieux over a hundred. So <clears throat> when I look at this team, it's, it's just absolutely solid. And then I take a look, they've got four signed defensemen and Chikrin, Dumba, Rissalainen, and Slavin, and that's a pretty good solid four right there. Uh, so with only, uh, I mean, with 11 forward side and four defense, all, all the Bruins need to do is uh, drop one forward and two defensemen, and they're golden. Uh, the prospects are starting to look a little light down there for the Bruins. Uh, probably their best bet is Evan Bouchard, but uh, I don't see Ryan RK signing him this year. He just doesn't have enough experience in the NHL. Um, this was the hardest thing for me to judge was the Bruins goaltending. I looked at Blackwood and Grubauer and, oh man, uh, both of those goaltenders can put up really good numbers. We've seen them do it. And, uh, but, they're also injury prone at the same time. And that's kind of scary, especially Grubauer. Grubauer is getting a little old. The one thing with Grubauer, as long as he plays, he's going to get his wins with the abs, no matter what. Blackwood, it's a little tougher this year uh, because he's going to be fighting uh, Corey Crawford for space and increase this year. And that could be tough on him. Or that could actually help him out. Who knows? He might play better with less of a workload. So, uh, but overall, when I take a look at this team, uh, I see solid forwards with hardly anybody to sign, solid defensemen with hardly anybody to sign, definitely solid goaltending. Uh, like, I mean, their save percentages last year were 915, 916. You've got two goaltenders doing that, you're doing good in fantasy hockey. So, so you have to call that goaltending solid. So overall, it's just a completely solid team. It's got the penalty minutes, it's got the plus minus, it's got the points, it's got the goaltending. It's uh, it's definitely uh, first overall in the Langway division is the way I see it. Uh, they are the big bad brooms with the penalty minute boys up there and everything. Ryan's kind of built them out of their NHL mold. And uh, how can you bet against RK? The guy every year just, produces playoff teams every year, year in, year out. So that would be my prediction for the year. So just to recap, I've got brewing up suds coming in at number one. Moves like Jaggers, your Jaggers. <laughs> Have another one. Moves like Jaggers coming in at second. I got the Port Elgin Maple Leafs coming in at third. Living Skies Capitals grabbing the last playoff spot in fourth place. I've got the Collwood Rangers starting to move up in their rebuild in fifth. I've got the Martians moving up to sixth in their rebuild. I've got the Chiefs falling big time down to seventh. And the Mustangs still in a rebuilding year, bringing up the bottom in eighth spot. So let me know what you think. Whether you agree or disagree, let me know in the comments below. Uh, Come and so that's what I've got for you guys. That would be my predictions for the for the Langway division this year. And I'm such an expert, you know, that's why I'm putting out this podcast because I know you're all going to hang on every word I say. What I say is going to be true with these predictions. I've never done any predicting in my life. Let's see how good I do here at the start. But like I said, this is a big time to change. Uh, once the draft is done, I'm going to have, I'll do the uh, bossy division for you on another day. But as for now, that's the Langway report and I'm out for in zone. Peace out.